Thank you. God. Except for liking so the crazy. Capitals. Oh, Lord. All right. So uh, we'll fix cameras in a second. But hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Season 3, Episode 8 of Star Trek Fenrir. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fenrir at this point, uh, you've got some catching up to do, but I'll do my best. Uh, we're a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2412 aboard a Cerberus class in the Sabine Expanse. Now, you don't need to have really watched previous episodes except for the one right before this one, Episode 7, to enjoy this one. But otherwise, these are kind of like bottle episodes in Season 3. You can just pick them up and run with them and have a good time with them. Now, the episodes you can find on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, really, in terms of announcements, I don't really have much other than to say that the Groundskeeper campaign, the All Dean game, is going pretty well. Uh, you can check that out every Sunday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, other than that, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with uh, our lovely rat friend. Yeah, hi, I'm Dobby. Uh, John plays me. Uh, John lives in Seattle. Uh, he does chubby cobalt gaming shit. And uh, yeah, I'm a lieutenant junior grade and I do security. And uh, Commander is really a cool guy. So great. All right, up next is Watney. Um, I'm Watney. I play Commodore Briar Chaletta, and uh, she's the captain of the Fenrir. And um, I also play the Denobulan Dr. LL, who I will be tonight. All right. Up next would be Dag. Dag is currently on mute in a meeting. Um, I'll let him do his own introduction when he's here. But uh, up next would be uh, Mr. RJ. Hey, guys. Uh, I am Aaron. I play Commander RJ Williams, Chief of Security for the Fenrir, and um, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen. All right. And certainly last but not least, we have Mr. Matthew. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I usually play uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, one of the uh, Fenrir science officers. But tonight I am playing my secondary supporting character, Lieutenant Cartwright, who is a, uh, a Hydra security officer. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and run the introduction. All right, welcome back. Uh, we'll fix webcams when Dag gets back, but uh, something I like doing for all my Star Trek streams is having an opening log as prepared for or prepared by the players. And today we have a interesting um, supplemental log from Commander R.J. Williams. So um, take it away. Oh sure, yeah, everybody, so. listen. This is going to be good. <laughs> so uh, for this one, we'll sort of pan over to. Uh, Commodore Archuleta's ready room as her um, desk display lights up with a message. Incoming subspace transmission priority two, Starfleet encryption code Delta, decrypting. As the screen lights up, you see Williams sitting in what appears to be a filthy dress uniform in the control seat of a runabout, uh, visibly grimy and sweaty, um, Alel, Tavi, and Cartwright can be seen moving with purpose in the background. Um, and Williams begins. 
This is Commander R.J. Williams aboard Shuttle Damocles. Commodore, there's been a turn of events. On the positive side, the clinic is almost fully operational, but that's about where it ends. We have a missing Federation ambassador who may or may not be involved in the kidnapping of a socialite's little sister for various despicable and sundry reasons. Um, all we have to go on is some stage vandalism of a Federation embassy, uh, some all too convenient incriminating evidence, and a few minutes of inconclusive security footage. We were working with local authorities on this, but they've proven to be a mixed blessing. It seems the ambassador is widely regarded as guilty until proven innocent here, and the locals are, quite frankly, obstructionist. Personally, I'm not convinced this situation is what it seems. Something just doesn't add up. Throw in a suspected connection between the ambassador and the Orion Syndicate into the mix, and we have ourselves one hell of a snafu. But I know we're on the right track, but it's come at a cost. Moments ago, we were ambushed investigating the ambassador's last known location. We took heavy fire from a higher position. Alel, Zeke, and a local officer were injured. Our assailants were using chemically propelled projectiles like the gunpowder weapons from Old Earth. So we got pretty lucky. Uh, Alel's wounds are mostly superficial. Zeke and the local are down but stable. And we've taken refuge in the runabout to address their wounds and plan our next steps. Fortunately, we've managed to take all four of the assailants into custody. Tavi's bringing them out for interrogation now. What I wouldn't give for a hybrid Romulan Betazoid and about 100 cc's of psilocybin right now. Still glad you put me in charge. William's out. Very nice. And you may have one momentum for that lovely log. So we are going to start in the runabout. And I'd like to imagine that uh, as it is... Uh, Williams, you're up front, basically recording and transmitting that log. Uh, we have Tavi and Cartwright in the sort of center section of the runabout, where the science lab slash wash closet has been converted into a makeshift brig. And then in the rear of the runabout, we have Zeke, the local constabulatory, and Alel, and Alel is treating all injuries. So at this point... Um, I think we're going to pick on Williams first. So Williams, you've just finished your... Um, your report when you notice that the comm panel to your right is beeping at you. I'll uh, acknowledge the transmission and say this is Federation Shuttle Damocles. Yes, this is um, well, I suspect you know who I am, Inspector Sava. How are things going? It's been eventful. Inspector Saba, quite inventful. Yes, yes, I can see you right now on my screens. You um took out quite a few buildings there, Commander. Extraordinary times, Inspector. Hmm. Well, just so you know, I will be billing the Federation Embassy for your expenses. Please do. You How was my injured. officer? Injured. Seriously, but stable. Hmm. Well, I suppose that is a blessing. Do you have any more leads? We have four assailants in custody. I'm about to start the interrogations now. Very well. I expect you to forward any findings you have immediately. You'll be the first to know. Sava out. And Comline goes dead. Could have what sent was back she up. doing? Wasn't she looking through the, looking through that office? She was. So she knows everything about where we are, but we don't know anything about what she's doing. That's not a very cooperative investigation. Hmm. Well, as uh, RJ put it, obstructionist. Yeah. <sighs> And RJ will sort of lean back, take a breath, and um, tap his comm badge and say, Williams to LL. Go ahead. How are your patients? How are my patients? Why don't you roll me a uh, reason medicine difficulty of one? Actually, let's just make it a difficulty of zero. You're, you're a competent medic. You know what you're doing.
What was that again? Reason, Reason medicine. Okay. Um. Forensic science. <laughs> nah, not gonna help you here, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Hey, two successes means two momentum. Cool. Uh, Zeke's doing fine. He's uh, in a, not a coma per se, but he is sort of unconscious as the dermal regenerator does its sort of beauty work, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, the local constabulatory is basically the same way. Um, you could wake either up at any point. Uh, otherwise, they'll come around on their own in maybe about 10, 20, maybe even 30 minutes. Okay. Um, and the prisoners are? They're fine. I mean, some of them have some energy burns from the high frequency of the phaser shots, but they'll live. Okay. Shall I uh, respond? Um, I think everyone will make a full recovery, Commander. Good. And how are you doing? I'm fine. Tavi helped me with, uh my shoulder excellent well stand by we're about to start the interrogations okay starfleet interrogations right are there any other kind oh yes there are <laughs> well all right if you want me to say it then Starfleet interrogations. I just Thank don't you. know if they have. You can never tell. They may have pre existing medical conditions that we don't know about. Besides, it's standard procedure to have a medical officer standing by at any interrogation. Well, um, she'll look left and right. Guess that's me. I guess so. Well, I'm going to check in with Cartwright and Tavi. William's out. And uh, with that, I'm going to, Williams is going to um, get up and head into the back here. All right. So uh, in the back there, you again find uh, Tavi and Cartwright before a force field uh, that is containing the, I have three, but there's really four there. There just isn't a room for another token. Um, there's four of the Savonian thugs that attacked you. Uh, of those that are conscious, uh, two of them are sort of looking at each other and doing everything they can to not look at you outside the force field. Uh, only one is actively like watching you as you come in, Williams. I believe you are muted. How's this? That'll work. All right. Um, so if I guess I will lock eyes on the one who is actively watching us mm -hmm. and try to get a uh, sense from his, I know he's an alien, but from the posture that seems to be universal, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what his, what his demeanor is. Is he confrontational or defensive? Let's see. Uh, let's do an insight security, difficulty of one. And if you have anything like people reading or um, body language, that would definitely apply as a focus. I've got interrogation. That would definitely apply as a focus. Okay. All right, so with two successes, I believe you're now sitting at four momentum, if I have that crowd correctly. But yeah, um, it's a mixture of defensive and a mixture of I can't believe I got caught. So a little bit of stupefied, a little bit of confusion. Um, but he also is very guarded, you know, has his arms sort of across his chest, very closed position kind of a thing. Yeah, so I'll... I'll start in with a with kind of a casual approach and just say, are any of you hungry? Do you need anything to eat or drink? 
And all three of them that are conscious just look at you, shake their heads, and then go back to what they were doing initially. Right. Why were you waiting for us? Silence. Sure. I guess it stands to reason that you don't want to tell me. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is that you assaulted, well, visiting delegates. Hey, we got a raid. Yeah, we did. You've assaulted visiting delegates. You've assaulted an officer of the constabulatory. I don't know much about the law here, but where I come from, that would land you a pretty lengthy prison sentence. Don't you think you may want to mitigate that by cooperating with me a little bit? Roll me a present security difficulty of three, and you will have a focus of interrogation here. Okay. Uh, and I will spend a... Uh, no, you know what? I'm not going to spend any momentum for that one. I yeah. am going to um, tap a value and use determination. Okay. What value are you tapping? Uh, I'm going to uh, tap the value of whatever remains, however improbable must be the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... I'd let that apply. All right. So, and I'll use that for uh, an extra die as an automatic one. So you get and... four successes, which means you get one momentum. I believe you're up to five now. And yeah, actually, the two that are sort of doing their best not to look at you just turn further away. But the defensive one, strangely enough, uh, sort of unfolds his arms from across his chest and says, Look, uh, job was to whack you. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean... You were supposed to be lured to that spot. We'd kill you. That's all we really know. Lured by who? Well, I mean, the, the whole trail of... Uh, uh, what would you call it? Uh, clues? Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs? I don't know. All right. Look, man, there's a reason I'm muscle. I don't do the thing. Sure. Well, who hired you? Well, the Orions did. And at this, one of the others just actually literally goes over and with a more, with enormous power, backhand slaps the talking one and says, shut up. <laughs> Look, he's, he's already said it. You can't unring that bell. So you might as well tell me everything that you know, otherwise... I'll update Inspector Sava on a non-coded frequency that my assailants have fingered the Orion Syndicate. Roll me a present security difficulty of three here again. Let's see how you do. Interrogation would still be a focus. I might okay. take free momentum. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I suppose by law of probability that would have to happen at one point. Eventually. But no no complications at least. Yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything we can do here. Um No, I think we're gonna let that fail, and the failure means that uh the one that did the slapping, the one that delivered the backhand, sort of turns to you, laughs and says, <laughs> You don't have the balls to do it, Starfleet. just tap the, uh, the the wall panel link in with the runabouts computer say um computer open a an uncoded or an unencoded channel to inspector saba please working and the computer beeps and 
starts to try and get a hold of Saba. But I think mm-hmm. uh, I think Lee, or I should say Cartwright, you looked like you wanted to say something there. Uh, yes. Well, uh, actually, I'd probably just say it outright. Uh, sir, you do realize that the Orion vessel that uh, we, well, we determined might actually be holding the ambassador departed, and they are, well, outpacing us uh, every moment we wait. Perhaps we could continue this interrogation as we seek out the vessel? We can attempt to identify its warp trail and follow it as you continue to conduct the investigation. Excellent idea. Let's, well, I suppose I'm the pilot, aren't I? Well, I don't think you want me doing it again, sir. <laughs> it's, just, it's not exactly my area of expertise. I, I tried, you know, unbalancing the warp nacelles or something like you told me, but I'm afraid that I don't have the technical skills necessary to accomplish such a feat of brilliant piloting such as uh, you are known for. Certainly, sir. Yeah, and he looks right. over at Tavi for a moment and then back at, uh, at uh, Williams. Oh, oh yeah, well. he does a good job. Flies real good. Oh, absolutely, impeccably. All right, all right, thanks, thanks, guys. I'm mm-hmm. gonna, I'm gonna go take care of that. Why don't you two keep an eye on these <coughs> gentlemen? All three of them, sir. Oh, there's four of them in there. One of them's sleeping. Uh, I was referring to my eyes, but uh, very well. I mean, between oh, you, oh yeah, between them, you've got one more eye than needed. That is true, yes. Very well very well observed, sir. That is why you are chief of security. You have a, a keen sense of uh, insight into people. You're always, always watching. Yes. All right. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> so w- once, once the commander leaves, Tommy's going to lean forward and look at the Savonians inside the cell. So you know what? You're damn lucky. The commander is the one that was interrogating you. You know what they used to do on Earth? They used to put rats inside baskets and make them chew through the interrogated people. Just let that stew in your head. All right, I got to go up front. (laughs) All right. So, uh, Williams, uh, since you are now piloting the shuttle, I have a few questions to ask you. Yeah. Uh, First things first, are you doing a we need to get out of here and chasing the Orions immediately kind of departure. Are you doing the by the books departure? You know, what is, what is your process here? Um, well, my first instinct would be to, um, my first instinct would be to just get the hell out of here ASAP, but we've wrecked enough buildings and scenery for one day. I think, Uh, maybe we'll do a, you know what I am, I'm going to, we're going to get out of here as fast as we can. We're just going to go. Okay. I'd like you to roll me a daring and a con difficulty of three. Uh, Uh, can I assist as like a co-pilot and stuff? You certainly may. Uh, Tavi, why don't you also roll me a daring and a con difficulty while you're assisting? So and this will let me do something I've wanted to do for a little while. Uh, GM, I'm going to challenge a value. Okay. What are we challenging? I'm going to challenge my value um, measure twice, cut once, because I am not being careful here. Mm-hmm. I am just... Now's, now's no time for hesitation, so... Okay. And yeah, just you get a point of determination back. Remember that value is crossed out until the end of the session, and then you replace mm-hmm. it at the end of the session. Got it. Okay. Uh, so. All right, I got shoot. you back there, Commander. Sure do. There we come. And uh, you use determination for the free successes. So that yes, is sir. a total of four successes, which means you get one momentum. So, Williams, with Tavi's guidance, you are able to get the runabout up off of the street and out of the caldera of the city and begin flying up into the atmosphere. However, as this is all going on, that warning pan or that comm panel to your right, it begins bleeping again. All right, while I'm piloting, I'll reach over and 
and slap it. And Williams here. Mr. Williams, what is it you are doing? Following up on a lead. Hmm. So you're not running from the scene of the crime? Hardly. You can expect me back when we've caught up with the Orions. Hmm. If you're not back in one hour, there will be consequences. And then the line goes dead. She's not very nice, Commander. I mean, you're trying your best to help her out. You know, she could, you know, just help a little. Yeah, you know, in a weird way, I can kind of see her point. I mean, this is her, this is her world, it's her jurisdiction, and yet we're here running around like we own the place, flying through buildings. Look, they wanted to be a part of the Federation. I know some of them did. And I think that's why it's important that we put our best foot forward. We have to win over the naysayers. Otherwise, well, this, this courtship may not last long. Speaking of courtship, at this point, you guys have managed to leave the atmosphere of the planet and you've begun angling away from the uh, icy world that is the Savonian homeworld. And as you do, um, I would like, uh, let's see, who has the highest science score among all of you right now? Probably Alel. Four? I think Alel has it then. So Alel. Uh, with you at sensors, I'd like you to roll me a reason and a science, please. Difficulty of two. And this is to see if you pick up on the warp trail or anything that would give you a direction of, you know, where the Orions went. Forensic science. I'll give it to you. Thank you. But it's turning into power systems, so just be aware. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> just tell me no, it's fine. I mean, um, no. I mean, there's an argument for it fitting, so. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a momentum. Okay. Oh, only one success. Uh, I tell you what, I will let this succeed at cost, but I will. There will be a complication on the field. Okay. You do have values if you wanted to re-roll those two zeros. Um, I don't think I have one. All right, then we're gonna let it stand. And uh, the complication will be that Alel, yeah, you find the warp trail of the Orion uh, ship that left here. However, the complication is they have a significant lead on you. The only way you're going to be able to catch back up is if someone kickstarts the warp core of the runabout into overdrive. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'll uh, do it. Uh, if I may, Lieutenant, you are a, a capable security officer, but... Um... Perhaps uh, Lieutenant Hillel might wish to wake Crewman Zikatherix. He may be more talented in this area than you. You, he, you could at least use his assistance. Um. Yeah, anyway, Commander, they have a lead on us. It's pretty big. Well, we have to close that gap by any means necessary. Yeah, you heard him. Um. I might be able to wake Zeke. Do it. You know, I do have a focus in power systems. Hey, well, there's partially a Gorn. <laughs> oh, he's a ghost. No. Yeah, he's a ghost <laughs> Gorn today. What have we done? What has science wrought? <laughs> it's funny. It's like reverse green screen. Mm-hmm. Gorn's green. All right, but now Dag is here. Let's uh, Let's do webcams real quick so that everybody's where they should be. All right, so up next is going to be uh, Watney, and then Dag, and then Williams, and then Matthew. <sighs> Wonderful. Everybody's where so they should be. So much better. Yeah. So, like, just where I belong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, Dag, if you are saying anything, we cannot hear you. I'm not saying anything yet. <laughs> there you go. Gotcha. So, Alel, do you wake up Mr. Zeke? I would like to go try and wake him up. All right. I'd like you to roll me a control and a medicine difficulty of one. Okay. Uh, 
Let's keep this streak going. Um, I don't think I have a a thing. A focus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we do. So I again will let this succeed, but I'm going to take two threat rather than a complication this time. Okay. So yeah, you uh you take a hypo, you into uh, Zeke's neck, and Zeke, you come to consciousness. Hey, what the heck? You're fine. Shh, shh, Ow! You're fine. you're fine. You're alive. What the heck happened? There was a firefight. <laughs> but um, everyone's alive. We're flying away. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm going to take a nap. No. Um, <laughs> she's going to try and like find a stimulant or something in her kit mm -hmm. and administer that. Oh, Easy what's enough the problem? Uh, <sighs> Feel better? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, what's happening? Uh, we better get you up to up to the, the front. I'll explain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a very quick walk past Cartwright up to the front of the runabout. So uh, the sensor log shows that the Orion ship carrying, I think it's the ambassador, probably. Um, they have a huge lead on us, and we need to uh, kick the warp core of the runabout into overdrive. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me uh, let me take a look. All right. So, Zeke, there's a few ways you could go about doing this. The first is admittedly less difficult than the second option, but the second option will yield more power for you when you arrive. So first option is you divert power from something on the runabout, meaning that you take it from sensors, maybe even life support. You know, you take power from something, um, and that would be a daring engineering difficulty of two. Um, when it comes to keeping power, if you want to have all systems powered when you catch up to the Orions, that would be a difficulty of three, still daring engineering. Hey, I, I think I can do this. Daring engineering. Um, can I tap a value? Uh, you could. There's also two momentum if you'd like it. Um, yeah, I'll take, uh, can I take both? Well, it's one momentum for one die at the moment. Okay. Take one for one. And uh, I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. as a value. Daring. Oh, I see. You're using the value still. So it would be the two momentum. Yeah. Remember, you are rolling three die here. And am I able to assist him? If you tell me how. Uh, you know, I have a specialty in power systems. I am looking for ways to help increase the power flows into the circuits that he is maintaining. You may also do a daring engineering. All right. Uh, is this considered an activation? This is. This means you can give him a value, a talent, a focus. And that goes for Tavi and Alel and Cartwright as well. So, uh, let's go with uh, shuttle engineering. That'll work. All right. Uh, hey, uh, I kind of got this thing wired up in here like a Christmas tree. So, uh, everybody, hang on to your butts. All right, that's three successes. Ooh, all right. So uh, what this means is you are able, you do succeed, you are able to basically kickstart the warp core into hyperdrive. There you go. Now we're mixing the streams. Um, but you're able to kick it into overdrive and everyone in the runabout sort of hears the uh, engine hum go to a higher pitch as the field, or sorry, the star field outside um, begins to, you know, streak passes, the shuttle jumps to warp. And uh, those of you looking at a con at the moment, that the con console, there you go, that's a mouthful. Um, looking at the con, you see that you are approaching warp, warp 
seven, warp eight, you know, you're pushing the runabout as fast as it can possibly go. Um, but the good news is that after about maybe five, ten minutes of you doing this, you are catching sight of the Orion ship on your long range sensors. Oh, we're catching up to them. Uh, we're factors in the red zone, though. Williams to Zeke. Yeah, Zeke here. You didn't divert power from structural integrity, did you? Uh, no, why? No, nope, all good. William's out. And yeah, I'm going to preemptively sure. put us on this map, but we're not actually like in combat at the moment. But to sort of give you a feel for where you are in relevance to the Orion ship at the moment. And uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Derrera, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, I was going to ask, based on those long range sensor scans, can we determine the complement size and armament of that vessel that we're trading? You certainly can. And in fact, Cartwright, uh, since you're the one who asked, why don't you roll me an insight security difficulty of one? Okay. Uh, so I will buy one die. Insight security. Shipboard tactical systems. I'll let it happen. All right. Well, you only really needed the one success. So uh, what you find is that the ship is an Orion scout ship, very small, just barely bigger than the runabout, really. Um, standard crew complement is somewhere between five and eight. You're reading about nine life signs. So one more than usual. Uh, you also see that they are minimally equipped in terms of defensive weaponry. They have phaser arrays comparable to yours. Uh, they also have a actual torpedo launcher. Again, sort of standard complement on the torpedo launcher is two to three, but you're seeing about five. Well, uh, Commander, as you can see from these sensor readings, and he'll point out the various different holographic displays on that have popped up, um, they are probably uh, are superior in combat, although based on the fact that we have three capable tactical officers, I'm certain that we'll be able to overpower their, well, their expanded torpedo launchers with sheer ingenuity and <laughs> gumption. Well, we've got to, we've got to outthink them. Yeah, let's shoot them with gumption. That'll work. Uh, but coming upon them pretty fast. Let's. GM, are we in communication range? You are. I'm going to open a hailing frequency. All right, channel is open. Uh, this is Commander RJ Williams of the Federation shuttlecraft Damocles. You are ordered to power down engines and weapons, stand to, and prepare to be boarded. I'm going to spend two threat here to make the complication. You see that they are speeding up by diverting power away from their weapon systems. Okay, well, they, they did half of what I wanted. Um, a level lean over. How many life signs does it say are on there? Uh, nine. Nine. Well, I know it's like a long shot, but maybe the ambassador's on there and maybe he went with them. Uh, given the way in which he was removed from his vehicle, it seems more likely that he was abducted and is probably currently being tortured. So uh, perhaps Krubit Zikatherix could um, uh, further enhance our engines so that we might catch up with them a little bit more quickly. I don't know. Well, I was thinking if you guys could punch a hole in the shields, I could beam them over here and we could figure it out then. Solid plan, but in order to do that, we've got to get closer. So, Zeke, you're going to have to give me more. More power coming up. All right. So, Zeke, uh, we are going to move into structured sort of combat here, even if no phasers actually get fired, because I really want to push the red alert button. Uh, but uh, let's also get a turn order here. All right. So, scout ship, runabout. All right, cool. So, uh, Zeke, this is going to be another daring engineering, and this time the difficulty is going to be a three. 
You got any more momentum? Uh, you've got one at the moment. So you could give me one momentum for three die. You could give me one momentum and two threat for four dice. You guys okay with giving him some more threat? I love it. Oh, yeah. Right. Four threat it is. And uh, shuttlecraft blah, 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 as a focus. It does. Oh, yes. The uh, runabout would assist you as well. Uh, that would be in engines and engineering from the runabout, if someone could get that. Got that. Thanks. Um, okay, so you remember how I said I had this thing wired up like a Christmas tree? Mm -hmm. um, it's sparking, so don't uh, do not do anything crazy. That means LL, you can't plug in your hair dryer. <laughs> Very nice. What's the hair dryer? It's something neither of us really need. So just ask Lieutenant Tavi. He probably has to spend about, well, two hours a day in front of one. Oh, with that thought in mind, that's five successes, which means you get two momentum. And yeah, uh, Dag, you can move anywhere on this map within long range. So anywhere within 10. All right. Uh, here we go. Um... I can just grab that and move it, right? Yeah, you can just you, if you should you should be have yeah should be able to use the runabout. Do, 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 do. And uh, we'll come up on their. I'm assuming they're facing away from us. They are. They are speeding away from you. All right, we'll come up on their port bow or sorry stern uh, stern port stern uh, a little bit below their horizon. Okay. So, uh, all of you see the Orion scout ship sort of come into view on the front view screen. And uh, you are within firing range. However, the Orion... Well, let me ask this. You do have quick to action. I know somebody does. Mm -hmm. So, what would you like to use quick to action right now? You don't have to. Uh, I think it has to be used at some point during the first round of combat. But I think Correct. for um, for the moment, no. I'm not going to use them. Let them do what they're going to do, and then probably then I'll use it. But we'll see. Alrighty. So the scout ship is actually going to try and fire at you with its phasers. Now you guys have a little bit of an advantage here because you all are a scale two craft. You are considered a small craft, and the rules for small craft are hitting you is plus one difficulty than it would normally be. So for them, using their phasers they are going to be at a difficulty three to hit you. And for torpedoes, it would be a difficulty of four. So I'm going to give them, let's give them one additional die and let's see what happens. All right. So get that in the bar so I can actually roll. And they do get three successes. Interesting. Barely, but they get it. So they're going to hit the runabout and the phaser array doing reduced damage there still does five points of damage. Um, but you're a runabout, so you have resistance two. So you take three damage to your shields and they... Oh, go ahead. To be fair, they probably have versatile too. That's what I was getting to, yes. Sorry. They are going to actually aim for your engines and they're going to take away two power from your runabout. So the entire runabout jostles and shakes as a phaser blast hits the starboard nacelle, um, but it continues moving forward. You are still keeping in line with the scout ship. But it is not a guys small turn fire yet. down here. It's under control. Uh, sir, uh, shields are nearly gone. Uh, I, I do recommend that we uh, attempt to disable their engines. Oh. I don't think we can take another hit like that. I tend to agree with you. Let's let's return fire. Well, sir, you would be the most capable at that, I'm sure. Oh, well, all right. All right, so Williams, I need you to roll me a weapon security or a control security. The ship will assist you with a weapon security. And uh, I need to know, are you aiming for anything specific? You're just shooting them? You know, what's what's the play here? Uh, yeah, I am going to uh, actually aim to disable their web, their shield, not shields, sorry, engines. Okay. There we go. Then it would be a difficulty of three. Cool. Uh, I'll spend a point of momentum. Okay. 
uh, to roll an extra d20. Also, I do have um, augmented control. Okay. I got the shuttle. Okay. And I've got the focus in shipboard tactical systems. I assume that still applies with the small craft. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's three successes, which is all you need. So go ahead and roll me some damage on that. So it looks like on the runabout, we've got four four challenge dice. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to spend momentum to reroll those zeros? Yes, please. Very nice. So that's five before resistance, but you do have versatile two. So do you want to spend that two on getting rid of resistance? Yeah, let's do, um, I believe that's the piercing. Yep. Uh, condition, yeah, so we'll go ahead and go ahead and add that to the uh, to the phaser burst. All right, so why don't you describe uh, how you are able to disable their engines? I'll let you flavor this one. Um, well, I, I sort of picture the, the Hades class runabout as sort of weaving, so to prevent having to sort of both fly and gun at the same time, Williams lays in sort of uh, like an evasive pattern, mm -hmm. uh, which would give him a, a, an opening when they swing around to the port quarter again. Mm -hmm. um, and as they sort of strafe along, just, I guess, just shy of having the, uh, the, the shields sort of ricochet off one another, uh, they sort of let loose with a phaser blast at point blank range uh, before dropping back. Okay. So the phaser blast is actually able to pierce through the shields. Apparently the shields on this Orion scout ship aren't great. And you hit their engine block and immediately they begin venting plasma and dropping out of warp. So you guys can actually come up right alongside them uh, if you so wish. Uh, but my question is, are you uh, keeping the initiative with quick to action or is it the Orion's turn again? Uh, no, you know, we'll keep the initiative with quick to action. Okay. Um, and Williams will look at Cartwright and um, say, Mr. Cartwright, target their weapons and fire phasers. Uh, gladly so. All right. So Cartwright, same sort of thing. You're doing a control security and the ship will assist you with a weapon security. Now, this is technically a difficulty of four task because you are aiming for their weapons and the ship has already fired. So it is a difficulty of four to hit them with phasers. Okay. Um, I'd like to tap my value. His not to reason why, his not to make reply, his but to do or die because I am following orders. And mm -hmm. I feel like it is a do or die situation because it's just a little bit. One more hit and we would probably be destroyed. And I'll give you two threats to roll three dice. Okay. Look at that. Four successes. Very nice. Uh, plus the, the two, so six. Oh, plus the two, so six. Yep. All right. So six total successes, which means you get two momentum. And yeah, just roll me, you know, three damage and you're good. So that's four challenge dice for the... Yep. Uh, yeah, you're good. So uh, this time, uh, why don't you describe how you disable the weapons array? I'm gonna I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna let the players describe a little bit rather than it always being me. Okay. Uh, well, as the power systems fluctuate across the ship and it begins to tumble slightly as its engines uh, begin to fire uh, sort of unequally on either sides, the runabout curves around in that evasive pattern and it lays a spread of phaser fire across the torpedo launchers and the uh, the phaser arrays arcing around and then coming to sort of uh, uh, the other side of the scout ship. Gotcha. And yeah, sure enough that when both ships come to a stop, uh, what happens is you guys are actually more like this positioned where you're ahead of them, uh, maybe angled around so that you're still facing them. But yeah, you've put them dead in the water. Their engines and weapons have been fully disabled. Well, oh. excellent, Cartwright. Excellent. Thank you, sir. They were a sitting duck, uh, I believe, is the expression, right? Very good. Well, let's let's try this again. I'm going to hail the ship. No reply. Uh, Lieutenant Allel, might you be able to scan for human life signs before they kill the ambassador? I, I assume that's what they're probably thinking about doing at this point. 
Uh, yeah. There's she. Are there shields down? Oh yeah, their shields are gone. Oh yeah, we could just beam them over if we find them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, why don't you roll me a reason medicine difficulty of what? And I suppose the ship would assist you with a sensor's medicine. Would biochemistry work? Strangely, it would. Two successes, which means you get one momentum. All right, we have to see what the ship gets. I got the ship. Thank you. All right, so just the two successes. And yeah, uh, what you find, uh, Alel, is actually interesting. There are eight Orion, no humans, but one Savonian. There's no human life signs, but there's one Savonian. I bet you it's the girl. Zeke, yes. can you get a lock? Can I get a lock? Uh, I think so. You can. All right. Uh, what is this, control engineering? Actually, I would say, based on the current circumstances, I would just give it to you. But if you want to roll for momentum, we certainly can. Just give it to me. Okay. <laughs> Phrasing. Um, so you dance your claws across the console and materializing in the back of the runabout uh, where Zeke is at the moment is a Savonian woman. And uh, yeah, Zeke, this is the same one that is in those pictures. I'm not going to go into details, but it's the same one in the pictures. But she's got clothes. She's good. She looks fine. No injuries. Just, just, just there. No injuries. Yeah, no injuries whatsoever. All right, I got, I got her, Commander. Uh, Alel, you might want to come just make sure everything's okay. Alel will go and make sure everything's okay. Okay. Now I have a question for you. What are you doing about the Orion scout ship while that's going on? I'm going to put it in a tractor beam and haul it back to the Savonia. Okay. But maybe she's fleeing for a reason with them. If one has to depend on Orion slavers to be uh, extricated from a particular situation, I don't think that it's probably one in which you were behaving legally. So, um, okay, I'm just going to ask her. What's hmm. her name again? Uh, my name the... is Bozdier. Bozdier. Uh, do you feel comfortable enough to tell us what was going on on that ship? Were you well, taken they were, from your planet? Uh, from what I could understand, they were going to make me um, an Orion slave girl, whatever that means. Interesting. Okay, yeah, let's go take her back. <laughs> and right. uh, she actually kind of looks around Zeke and Alal and she says, Is the ambassador here? I don't see him with you. Well, we were looking for you. Well, we were looking for him and you, and hoped that he would be with you. No, I believe the Orions had other plans for him. I didn't get quite a wind of what it was particularly, but... That course right. back for the planet, Commander? Yes, and um, Lieutenant Tavi, could you please put that Orion ship in a tractor beam? Yeah, sure thing! So the runabout uh, scoops up the scout ship into a tractor beam and begins soaring back towards the planet, um, which means I can put us on this screen and go ahead, Williams. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say, can we, I know, like, inspector, the, the inspector only gave us an hour mm -hmm. uh, to do what we had to do and get back. I want to make sure that we're back in time so that we can sort of check in. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to give Alel some time with... Um, the Savonian girl to attempt to determine her relationship with the ambassador. Okay. That can happen. <laughs> um, so Alel will take her into the more medical area of the runabout where she had been doing all of the other um, 
medical things with the prisoners and her crew. Mm -hmm. And um, she'll continue her scans of this Phonian girl. Mm -hmm. And um, while she's doing that, she'll she'll be like, so um, do you want to tell me a little bit about how you ended up with the Orions? Well, um, first I must ask, are you with the ambassador or were you with my sister? Because that sort of depends on my answer here. Well, we are from, um, we're basically the Federation's version of Second Contact. Oh. Um, we're here to help establish the medical clinic. Oh. Well, um, do you want the long version or the short version? Uh, is our warp still in overdrive? Mm hmm. Uh, we'll take the short version, please. Well, short version is my evil witch of a sister wanted to get rid of me, and she found poetic justice in finally giving me a chance to get away from the planet. Ah, I see. And does your sister happen to know an inspector, Saba? Mm, yes, they were friends in college, from what I understand. Right. So the ambassador. Yes. Do you know what happened to him? The last thing we saw was a camera footage of him being dragged into a vehicle. Then that's about as much as I know. I mean, I overheard one of the Orions saying that they had special plans for him. But besides that, I, I don't have a location or where they might have taken him. Oh, um, well, you deserve to know that these pictures exist so she will show them the pictures the and yeah. she looks extremely confused as she looks at the pictures and says well um i don't know quite what to think about this but i can assure you those are not me hmm so did you and the ambassador get along quite famously in fact i made every art piece in his office Ah, I see. Well, um, I think I've got all I need here. So um, we should be arriving back at your planet shortly. All right. Should I remain here or go sit somewhere else? Or You can do whatever you'd like. Just don't go in the back where the hitmen are. Oh, um, yes. I will avoid them. Okay. If you need anything, there's replicators. And yeah, I imagine at this point, Alel, you sort of step away to have a conversation with the rest of the away team. Mm -hmm. Well. That sleazy, featherless, smooth-skinned sister just sold her and tried to sell her sister into slavery? I don't think the Savonians have smooth skin at all. Quite the opposite, actually. And what do you mean, smooth skin? By the way. Well, Sorry, no offense. Skin, it is quite no hideous, offense. but look, I have ridges, don't I? <laughs> I think if anybody's offended by that comment, it should be me. <laughs> but oddly, Zeke, that's poetic, very fitting. She is a smooth skin. Yeah, it's. Kind of a metaphor for someone who isn't as cool as a Gorn. I, Commander, you're the furthest thing from a smooth skin. Just so you know. That's you kind have, of you to say. You have a very nice texture, sir. Yes, it's it's the texture I, of your soul, not the, not the outside, the skin. It's it's what's inside that counts. He you moisturize, it. don't you, Commander? So, all right, Zeke, can you please? establish an uplink with the Orion chips computer, maybe see if we can get some information on where the ambassador may be stashed. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, I, I might be able to get a link with, uh, you know, some secure traffic cams if you don't ask too hard about how. Anything that you can give me. At this point, oh. I'm not... I'm not terribly interested in Inspector Sava and what she thinks. 
Yeah, I don't think we should be checking in. Checking in is just going to be her coming in here and fixing it. Well, how do we know Sava wasn't working with uh, the sister? Oh, if I guarantee was... she definitely is. You like, think Sa- you think Sava planted the evidence? Seems a little convenient that as soon as we show up at the embassy, there's her and her forensics team. Yeah, I'm going to get to work on this uh, facial recognition algorithm and see what I can do and find the ambassador. All right, please do. I will say one thing, Commander, if I may. We do have Officer Thorson in the rear. It's possible that not everyone in the uh, investigative department has been subverted by uh, uh, Miss Bosis Lane. Uh, if we awoke him, we might be able to solicit his views on the matter. If he's moved by uh, Miss Bosley's and sister's story, then perhaps he could be a, a value to us? As law enforcement, he probably has access to these things that will make it a lot easier. Yeah, Excellent. and even if he was originally on Saba's side, uh, she kind of set him up to be killed. Yeah, I would she definitely did. recommend we restrain him before telling him that we found the person we were looking for. Well, well not if really. He's a, if he's on a bio bed, we should be able to establish a uh, containment field similar to the ones that we use for surgery. Hi. And Mr. Cartwright, I'd like for you to be the one to break the news to him. So I'm going to spend, uh, let's <laughs> see, there's five of you. I'm going to spend 10 threat to end the scene because there is a sudden rock of the shuttlecraft as uh, you hear the sound of the force field detonating and you hear the Savonian thugs getting free. No! But that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. (laughs) Stick around.
right, welcome back. And uh, if you're just tuning in, things are uh, good and bad for our away team here. They've rescued the supposedly stolen away uh, Bozadir. But uh, apparently there's some problems with their prisoners, meaning that the prisoners have broken out of containment. And we are going to go straight into initiative order. And actually, I need to put one more of these people on the screen. There we go, because there's five of them. Give that one a green dot. All right. So uh, I am actually going to spend two threat to have them act first. And specifically, I'm going to have Mr. Blue Dot. Uh, so Cartwright, you sort of look towards the sound of the explosion down the hallway. And you see barreling at you is one of the Savonian thugs. So I need you to roll me a Daring Security, difficulty of one, and this is opposed. Your number to beat, ooh, you need four successes here to succeed. Uh, I will buy one extra die. Okay. And I'm going to assume my hand-to-hand -hand combat focus applies. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's only three. Uh, do you want to determination that, or...? No, because I've already uh, spent determination, so... All right. So I think what happens, uh, interestingly enough, is uh, let me ask this. Does Cartwright have any resistance? He does not. No. Then we enter we enter into a certain a that we enter into an interesting scenario where the Savonian thug literally flying tackles Cartwright to the ground and gives you a knockout punch that will either knock you out, meaning you are out of combat until probably Lau gets and gets you back up. Or you can spend that two momentum that you have to remain in the fight. Yeah, I feel like I'd like to spend those two momentum, but uh, I don't want to steal from the group. If, okay, I'm no, going to take do those it. two momentum. Do it. All right, so to. you are going to still take five stress damage, um, but you are still awake as, you know, he, it's kind of like the um, Captain Marvel Thanos punch, where Thanos punches Captain Marvel and she just looks back like, kind of a Ding. thing. Uh, but it is any of the players' turn now. Oh, I don't mind? even know if I was carrying any. Oh, oh go, Cartwright, go! Okay. Yeah. Um, it's your birthday. I'm going to try to use my sort of smaller size to leverage him up and toss him off of me into the bulkhead. Okay. So, be another okay. daring security. Yeah, I'll just roll it naturally, I suppose. Uh. I'll, I'll give you a threat. You'll probably just use that right back, but... Uh, yeah. That's Let's okay. see what you roll first. Three successes. I'll give them one threat. I'll give them one threat. And they rolled three. Ty goes to the attacker. Go ahead and roll your unarmed damage. And that would be five because I have uh, mean right hook. All right. But I assume they have resistance. Actually, they do not. So you go in and cock the uh, Savonian thug, uh, you know, almost, almost, uh, what is it? Um, I'm forgetting the boxer term, but one of those really hard face punches that, you know, knocks them silly. Kind of the same thing there where your fist slams into them so hard, like their arms sort of go limp for a moment and they fall next to you. So uh, kind of like a mean right hook. There you go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Kari, you can stand up, move about the cabin. All right. And Cartwright sort of staggers to his feet. His uh, breathing mask or his apparatus has been slightly cracked. And you see that there's blood trailing, this uh, sort of purplish blood trailing along the side of his face. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Quite right. Uh, um, Allow will try and help, help him. Okay. Uh, so she'll she'll rush over to him and and scan super quick and ask him, do you know what, like, do you have an extra ma a breathing apparatus with you? Uh, oh, it's it's quite all right. Uh, I'm only leaking a bit of methane. It's fine. <laughs> Just a tiny uh, bit of methane. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, I'd like to get you fixed up. She's kind of keeping an eye on what's going on. All right. Uh, let's see. So Alel, I'd like you to roll me a. Daring in medicine, uh, difficulty of one, and the good news is that if you do this, Cartwright can choose to ignore another injury 
Uh, like if he was hit again and knocked down, he would be down for good. Um, but if you do this task, you basically are able to keep them able to avoid the injury, if that makes any sense. Uh, emergency medicine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, you get two momentum. Sweet. All right, so she'll uh, wave her uh, dermal regenerator over wherever he might be cut. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, your quick to action usage for the round, which means it is now time for the Savonians to go. And uh, I think the Mr. Purple Dot is actually going to run and say hello to Zeke. So Zeke, you turn and see a Savonian charging at you. <laughs> for, the, for those who can't see, uh, Dag just did the, you know, I'm looking at you, throat across, or finger across the throat type deal. Uh, but yeah, your number to beat, Dag, you need two successes on a daring security. Hey, smooth skin, what are you doing back here? <laughs> I'm guessing intimidation don't play a whole lot into this fight. Actually, it would. For you, it would. Awesome. You want an extra die? Uh, uh, nah. I'm gonna see what happens. Okay. So, uh, what happens is Ouch. the Savonian thug like punches you, but you don't even feel it. You're just like, okay. You take one stress damage, just one, but it doesn't really do anything in the grand scheme of things. And he kind of looks at you flummoxed and goes, what the hell are you made out of? Gorn. <laughs> we are Gorn. Interesting. I thought you were going to go into like the full like board quote there for a moment. Like we are the Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Uh, but that is the Savonian's turn. It is now the player's turn again. Uh, Zeke, Williams, and Tavi, you all can act. Well, one of you can anyway. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think Williams is going to run past Cartwright. Can I sort of can I make it to about here? Uh, let me sh see where you're moving first. Like, if you there, okay. Uh, yeah, you could make it there, no problem. So, on my way, um, I am going to. Uh, reach into the weapons locker mm -hmm. and uh i am going to pull uh, actually let me ask this question first mm -hmm. um can pulse grenades be set to stun i would rule that they can be yes all right well um that's escalation two uh all right, for you two threat uh but i'm gonna grab a pulse grenade on my way along uh, I want to set it to maximum stun and lob it into the room with the other three Savonian thugs. All right. Roll me, let's call this a control security difficulty of two. The reason it's two is because there's a lot of moving parts to this, like you're grabbing it out of the locker, you're arming it mid-motion, you're throwing yep. it in. So there's a lot of places things could go wrong. That is fine. Um, I'll take one point of um, momentum to buy an extra die. And you can do it, Commander. And I've got augmented control as well. That is uh, five successes. So yes, you gain three momentum as you throw the pulse grenade into the room, and then you dive back behind the wall. And there's another rock in the shuttle as the pulse grenade detonates. And uh, go ahead and roll me damage on a pulse grenade, which uh, so that's four. It's four plus, plus your security, security, actually. So nine. Yeah. That's my hero right there. Uh, yeah, they're out. They are definitely out. Like, when you peek back into the room, uh, the three of them are unconscious. And interestingly, what you note is that uh, the constable that you had taken with you, uh, Mr. Yellow Dot there, um, he is sort of draped over the Green Dot one. And you remember from your interrogation that the Green Dot one was the one who said the Orion connection initially. It's, you know, you're sort of seeing this in the heat of the moment. This is adrenaline kicking and giving you that moment insight. But it almost maybe looks like the constable is trying to choke out Mr. Green Dot. Hmm. 
But uh, it is now the Savonians' turn, and I have to see who's actually remaining for them. Um, they're all unconscious, so it is Zeke's and Tabby's turn. Uh, what about the guy that's fighting Zeke? Uh, he already went. Oh, okay. Um, I was thinking, is it possible to like do a computer command to disable gravity in this section of the ship, and then like punch this guy? Yeah, you could do that. That would be a uh, daring and an engineering. The ship will assist you with a computers and engineering. Let's call it a difficulty of two. Okay. I'm going to borrow some momentum. Okay. Uh, computer engineering override uh, Zeke Alpha Beta. And then I'm going to use my claws to grip on the hull. Okay. And daring... Engineering, submit, get that third dice, and uh, I don't really have anything for punching, so I'm not going to claim a uh, focus for this one, but let's see what happens. All right. Three successes, and if someone could grab the runabout. Again, that is a uh, computers and engineering for the shuttle. Okay, I guess I'll get that. Um. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> All right, so only three no successes, but uh, hey, you actually get that point of momentum right back. And yeah, uh, the gravity goes out in that section of the runabout. Uh, Bozadir behind you starts floating up into the air, and she's like, uh, uh, but Zeke, you come in and you deliver an uppercut. Uh, into the Savonian's face, and his head pops backwards, and uh, combat is over because they're all unconscious at this point. Dang. He committed a classical blunder. Tried to fight the Gorn. Without gravity. Or without the ingredients to fashion gunpowder. Whatever that is. Well, well. You should really uh, read the logs of the original USS Enterprise. It's quite informative about how to properly defeat one of your members of your race, uh, uh, regardless. <clears throat> Are you talking about that weak, improvised bazooka that that one guy did against my Uncle Jack? Oh, he's a family relation of yours. We're all family relations. Well, actually, that's quite interesting because the uh, same is true for us. I mean, the royal family, due to our polyamorous nature, is um, over 30,000 people. Wow. Um, okay, yeah, you win. It's a... Uh, this, this family picnics are a nightmare, but uh, it's neither here nor there. It's got to make reunions a little difficult. Oh, you have no idea. So, uh, should I pile these bodies up? Well, let's... Let's have a little take a look at them to make sure that they're all right. I'm just stunned. And once that's done, Tavi? Yes, I want sir. You to, I want you to grab a phaser rifle and guard them. Aye, aye, Captain. No. <laughs> it's, a, it's an expression. Deal with it. Oh, right. Before this craziness happened, were we going to wake this guy up back here? Well, actually, the guy that was back there with you is the yellow dot that yeah. Williams threw a grenade at. There was one of them that was a little bit more cooperative, and I believe that uh, Mr. Thorson was attempting to murder him. So perhaps we should extract him from the group of others who probably intend him ill. I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but they all kind of look the same. That kind of comes off the wrong way. I didn't want to say it. Is there a way that that could come off right? If you're talking about, like, cookies, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, symmetry is normally considered very attractive in many races. Well, guess I'll go check him out. You guys just shoot, 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 and here I go. <laughs> You're the oh. best, Alal. <laughs> now, oh, which well. one do you want me to wake up? 
This this guy right here, the guy that's on top of this other guy. She kind of like kicks them just a little bit. Fine. All right. So with everybody, you know, looming over this guy, uh, you wake up uh, Thorson and uh, looking down at him. <laughs> yeah, Thorson just looks up at you all and blinks his eyes and says, "Ah, hell. Well, I'm screwed." Yeah. So, uh, are you gonna kill me or are you gonna let the inspector do it? Oddly enough. Neither. I don't follow. Well, Thorson, I'm going to give you a chance to make it right and help us. And if you do that, I'll protect you from the inspector. And how do you propose to do that? She is quite literally head of internal affairs and investigations. You're talking about high-level corruption here. Like, look, I, I'm just... I, I'm like... A year onto the force at this point. Well, there's always asylum. After I've attacked you, you'll find that Starfleet doesn't tend to hold grudges. And, and what about the Orions? Can you keep me safe from the Orions? <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry about them. Oh, okay, so is there a procedure for this? or No, you just, you just talk. Just tell me what you know. Tell us what you know. Well, uh, I imagine you already know that from the girl that uh, we were supposed to make the ambassador disappear and uh, get rid of the girl. Uh... Part of the stipulation was that we needed the ambassador to go down and look bad doing it. And uh, that's why we planted those fake pictures in the first place, because we knew that uh, you, no offense, you Federation types were really sensitive about that sort of thing. Not so much with Savonians, but uh, we know you were sensitive types. So that's why we went with that angle. But uh, yeah, uh, well, he kind of looks around. What, uh, what time is it? Uh, computer time. And the computer reads off a uh, a time code, and the Thorson kind of nods and says, "All right, yeah, uh, your ambassador's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of this location." And he gives you a set of coordinates. I got it, Commander. Checking it out. And yeah, Zeke, uh, when you point the runabout sensors to that location in the city, yeah, you find a human life sign, faint but still stable. I got human life signs. All right, well, can we sort of establish an orbit above that point and maybe just beam him out? You certainly could. Looks clear to me. All right. So uh, we are going to let me clean up some tokens here so that uh, can actually move new tokens onto the screen. All right, so those four are in security right now. Thorson's right about there. And beaming in to the area back with Zeke is a battered and bruised Ambassador Isaken. And you can tell that uh, he had to have been bound at some point because there's chafing marks uh, on his wrists and his feet. Um, he is still clothed, but the tuxedo like sort of fancy dress that he was wearing has been sort of ripped in places and torn apart um and he looks absolutely haggard like he has been through the ringer and uh as he kind of materializes he actually crumples to the ground uh catches himself before he like hits his head and he sort of looks up at you zeke and says oh thank god you found me oh, we got god. you ambassador Hey, Commander, I got the ambassador here. He's a bit rough. Uh, he, he he definitely needs some uh, some good old hometown Starfleet care. Uh, don't worry about me. Did you get the girl? Did did you get yeah, Bozadir? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bozadir's here. It's all good. And uh, Bozadir shouts, I'm here. I'm here. I'm safe. And the ambassador goes, okay, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go asleep wanna, now. I just want to Medic! Let you know. We got... 
we got people we got we got four of those guys four of those thugs four of the Savonians uh in custody and uh one of the cops has flipped and uh has helping helped us find you that's good that's good um I'll be with you in a moment and then he his eyes roll up in his head and he goes onto the deck plate huh. um, yeah hello we'll go over make sure his life signs like his his vital life signs are stable at All right. least and yeah, Alel, you can easily just run your tricorder. He's, again, been through the ringer, but he'll live. Thermal regenerator here, maybe a resetting of a bone here. He'll okay. live. Okay. And at this point, Williams will sort of turn to Tavi and Cartwright and say, So, we have planetary official, complicit in kidnapping, and conspiracy, we have an upper class that, at least part of, doesn't want anything to do with the Federation. We've got a, a crooked cop seeking asylum, socialite's daughter wanting to go home, and a former Federation ambassador. So, gentlemen, what do you do? Sister. Well, sir, I believe that the Prime Directive would apply. Uh, we can only supply them with the information that we have regarding uh, the ambassador's innocence and, well, uh, both dear sisters' safety, and then uh, I believe leave them to their own affairs. Uh, Boza dear, surely you don't want to go back. Well, now that I've gotten off world finally, um, no, I actually would rather continue to travel the stars, but, um, I don't think there's very much remaining for me back home. Well, there's not really a whole lot to stop your sister from trying this again as soon as we leave. Fair point. I'd be, I'd be happy to make the same offer that I made to, to uh, Constabulatory Thorson. I think I will um, take you up on that deal. Very good. Yeah, say we give uh, Bozadine here the uh, ability to communicate what she has found out. That way we're not directly involved. And she can uh, give it to authorities that she think might be able to do something with it. Yeah, I mean, as a matter of fact, Williams will sort of turn and look at Thorson and say, is there anybody on your police force who isn't corrupt? I mean, I can think of a few judges that uh, we could probably use for this. Well, all right. Hello? You know the pictures. She said they're not real. Maybe it's time to do a little analysis. She'll ask uh, Thorson, like, can you explain them since you planted them? Yeah, we uh, we just used hollow imaging technology. Real easy. You're disgusting. Oh, yeah. Adobe Hollow Shop. Dad, if you guys used uh, hollow imaging on that, it'd be really easy to take apart the layers. Well, we didn't expect Starfleet to come along and break it apart as it were really no nope. if you target a federation you ambassador how planted do you, them there how do you expect that we not show up well we we thought you wouldn't look too hard at them listen i'm just i'm i i'm just the guy who does things i'm not the planning guy clearly, clearly. got a rookie <laughs> cop and a bad set of pictures doesn't look so good for you no no it really doesn't and uh, the ambassador's aide was he one of the ones who, um, let's say, was a thinker in this situation? Or was he just, uh, well, was he involved at all? You still got that Orion ship in tractor beam? He, wait. Oh, yeah, it's still there. There were uh, no human life signs. Damn it. Is he not human? That statement would indicate that likely no would explain how they met in an 
Orion controlled region of space. Hmm. Well, so my my guess is going to be that uh, maybe some of those guys are just goons up there, and the one guy we're looking for can come back and answer for uh, I don't know uh, a casting a Federation ambassador. Well, once we sort out who's who over there, I don't think uh, I don't think I'd leave it to the Savonians to prosecute that case. Oh, absolutely not. I'm just saying, maybe uh, the leverage is that we tell the goons to give up the fall guy, and uh, they get to go, and uh, the ambassador's aide stays behind and answers for the crime. I would say that all of the individuals on that ship are responsible for kidnapping a young girl. I don't feel entirely comfortable allowing them all to depart, although, Commander, your decision in the matter would, of course, be correct, whatever it might be. Oh, none of them are, none of them are leaving. We're, uh, we're going to bring that shuttle with us to the rendezvous with Fenrir. I'm going to throw those Orions into the brig. That ship's going to be confiscated as evidence. And we're going to drop them all off at DSD and let the brass sort it out. And actually, that's think... an amazingly insightful uh, choice of things to do there, Commander. Yes, an impeccable plan, indeed, sir. Thanks, and I guys. actually think, if I may interject, we're actually going to skip ahead just a little bit. Uh, we're actually going to skip to sometime after your rendezvous. And Commodore Archuleta, you're in your ready room uh, reviewing reports when there is a chime at your door. Come in. And in steps a freshly showered Commander Williams. Ah. That's, that's all you've got to say to me? Ooh. Well, I'm glad you got cleaned up. We look pretty rough. The last I... message. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, that was my first time getting shot at with a weapon that used a chemical accelerant. Your first time? Yeah. First time with a slug thrower. Hmm. Yeah. I've been shot at lots. It's part of the job. So, uh, sidebar, has she gotten any kind of report? This is actually, he has the report in his hand. Okay. Uh, is that for me? Sure is. He'll hand the pad over. She'll scroll through it and she's like, wow, this is, this is extensive. Do you want to give me the short version? Yeah. Um, corrupt upper class, corrupt police. Both wanted to get rid of a social problem in the form of that girl and a political problem in the form of Federation popularity on the planet. Figured they'd kill two birds with one stone, frame the ambassador for the girl's kidnapping, and sweep it all under the rug to keep everything status quo. But they didn't expect a Starfleet away team. Huh. Well, sounds like you turned over all the rocks on that planet. It's more like wading hip deep in sewage, really. I would imagine this would affect their eligibility for Federation status. Um, I mean, in my report, I go into some length as to how I, for whatever my opinion's worth, cannot endorse consideration for protectorate status at this time. It's hard for me to, I see both sides. Uh, I, you know, the, the, it sounds like there's some bottlenecking going on with the upper class of this society, despite the fact that seemingly the rest of the population would enjoy being a Federation planet. Um, and isn't that the kind of thing that the Federation's about? Absolutely, but I think that kind of change has to come from them first. 
I think really what we should probably focus on is instead of federation protection, federation outreach, a sort of grassroots bottom up, I guess, outreach, just give them a hand, show them what we're all about to the point where it's impossible for those in power to deny it. Uh, I don't suppose you think the ambassador is up for round two. Oddly enough, he seems very attached to the Savonian people. He's got a, a real fondness for him. He's eccentric, don't get me wrong, but his, his heart's in the right place. Just maybe we, maybe he gets a security detail. Probably more than what he got last time. Well, okay. sorry about the hmm. runabout, by the way. I didn't just, you know, grenades will do that. But Zeke tells me it'll buff right out. She hadn't like heard of the runabout yet. So she like scrolls through the report. Yeah. Like, what do you mean by runabout? <laughs> what happened? Well, you know, as I said in the, the initial report, it was a turn of events and that turn kept turning to the point where I had to detonate a grenade inside oh, the runabout. Oh, you crashed. Oh, 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 okay. Wait, di side note, didn't someone crash it last session too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grenades and Cartwright. I think he did great. <laughs> I mean, structural oh, yeah. damage aside, there weren't <laughs> even there weren't even any injuries. Those those building blocks were from what I understand pretty much empty. So you know. Um Alela somewhere like shaking her face. <laughs> <laughs> um well RJ, I you know, if anyone was gonna get to the bottom of something like this, it would be you. I mean Maybe next time we save ourselves some time and just send a telepath. <laughs> and I think on that note, we're actually going to shift away from the captain's ready room and we're going to go to six aft where uh, Zeke and Tavi, you guys are uh, just catching up, talking, uh, talking about the mission, enjoying your uh, return to the Fenrir. And of course, as a cameo, we of course have Visarcher in the corner. You know, Zeke, uh, you're, uh, I forget her name again. Was it Petunia? Yvette. Yvette. Yeah, Yvette, uh, well, you know, she likes to chase me, and uh, it's not very fun. I'll just just uh, set your phaser to stun setting four. That should uh, send her back to the quarters. Sorry about that. Well, keep... you know, I'm trying to design a saddle. And uh, maybe maybe we can make something of this. Are you gonna ride Yvette into combat? Cause like you're gonna need a reinforced saddle if you go for like ionic phase of fire or anything. Oh yeah, I'm I'm totally thinking it. Hey, you think uh, you think uh, you think RJ is gonna let her be like? Uh, can 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 he like deputize her? Well, you know, in the in the old uh, armed forces on Earth. They actually had different animals with rankings. Wow. So, you know, it's not outside the realms. Yeah, we'll just let's just put that on the bucket list. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think it might be pretty cool. You did pretty good up there though. I got to commend you. Uh you you're kind of like a sharpshooter with a phaser. Um, yeah, well, except for the fact that it was going to explode. Yeah, details. Yeah, well, you know, I think we did pretty good. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, the commander, the commander was just, you know, he, he did everything just right. Dude, that grenade throw was 
bonkers. Yeah, I wasn't, you know, I was thinking I was going to run and jump over Cartwright and grab a phaser and, like, shoot it in the room. But the grenade, that was a great idea. Whoever stocked those grenades is going to get, like, a commendation. That was probably the commander. He thinks of everything. Yeah, he really does. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. Speaking about getting paid the big bucks, uh, the door to six aft opens and in steps a certain Cation doctor. And she immediately looks towards you, Tavi, and says, There you are. You are getting a physical, and there is nothing you can do to escape this time. You got all the girls chasing you. <laughs> he runs for the nearest uh, Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so our, our last scene there is Tavi <laughs> diving towards a Jeffrey's tube and Saniri, like, hissing and chasing after him. And we kind of oh zoom God. up out of the window and we see the Fenrir just sort of floating by in space. And yeah, that's the end of uh, this two-parter. What did you guys think? I love it. I loved it. Fun, fun, fun. Cool. Yeah, that had all the... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Zeke off now. It's kind of hot under here. But that had all the good oh. trappings of a nice mystery. Yeah. The twist when we found out who was actually on... Ryan ship. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, what uh you know, it was it's been a while since I've run a mystery, so I know I was a bit weak in places, but it's good to hear that, you know, you guys enjoyed it all the same. Oh yeah, Absolutely. very much. Cool. So, uh, we're still having the stream going because I want to talk about reputation. Now, um, in terms of reputation, uh, I would like to at least try the alternate Starfleet reputation rules. And uh, did I put it in Discord? Yep. Yes, you Sorry. sent it to us. Okay. What? So what we're going to do is go through this list, and we're going to answer yes or no. Uh, and if you answer yes, I count one thing. If you say no, we don't count it. Um, so the first thing we need to determine is uh, for Williams and those on the away team, uh, we need to determine the following question. Was the mission successful? I'd say it was. So that's one positive. Uh, did you positively use one or more of the direct adventures directives? We didn't use a directive, so I'll give that to you as free. Uh, did you obey the orders given to you by your superiors? I mean, I think. Would you say Williams followed? I think that we satisfied the mission parameters regardless of any difficulties. Okay. Uh, we, we did set up the uh, medical clinic, which was the original one. Okay, mission. so that'll be three. And we did what Williams told us to do because we're lower decks. This is also true. All right, so that's three. Um, did you prevent combat from occurring or avoid escalating hostilities? No. Uh, I'm thinking no. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Uh, did you establish... Well, you know. Uh, did you establish common ground or peaceful cooperation with those who were newly encountered or previously hostile towards you? Thorson? Yes, Thorson. Thorson. Thorson, I'll give it to you four. Uh, did you directly contribute to saving the lives of innocent people or your fellow crew? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you take all reasonable action to render aid to those in urgent need of distress? Yeah. Yes. So that's, so that's six. Uh, now we have to determine negative influence. Was your mission a failure? No. Uh, were you disobedient to your superiors? No. Were personnel under your command killed during the mission? No. Did you employ force to any ends other than defense of ship, self, crew, or innocent life? Yes. Yes. So I think that's one negative. Uh, did you employ lethal force during the mission? As far as I know, you never went lethal. So that's good. Uh, did you take any unnecessary risks during the mission? Yes. yes. So that's two. Uh, did you cause or allow through inaction innocent lives to be lost? No. Uh, did you lie, cheat, threaten, coerce others in order to achieve objectives during the mission? Not really. I mean, you did interrogate them, but you didn't like actually like push them out of an airlock or anything. So I'm going to say no for that one. Um, did you permit a colleague or subordinate to act unethically or illegally during the performance of their duties? No, you guys pretty much did it by the book. All right. So what this means is that for every character that was on the away mission, uh, if I understand this correctly, you are going to be rolling me 6d20 and you need 
two successes. So it's your positive, which is six, and versus your negative, which is your difficulty of two. Um, your reputation score, if I read correctly, um, is is it starts at a ten. So you want ten or lower on each of these rolls. And this is just challenge dice? Uh, no, this is just regular d20s. Six regular d20s. How many are we What's the command six? again? Uh, slash R space six d20. All right, so we are going to count anything 10 or lower. So let's go through this. Uh, so for Tavi, I see three successes. I see for Lee, I see Cartwright has two successes. Uh, Williams, you have two successes. Alel has two, but also two complications. So, oh, and there's... Uh, there's Zeke. Zeke has two successes. All right. So it looks like everybody is going to pass this, which means if I read this correctly, um, you get one point of reputation. So you're now at 11 reputation. However, Alel, because you rolled those complications, um, I need you to note somewhere on your sheet Mm -hmm. that you've acquired one point of shame. And we can talk offline what this point of shame means, but basically something you did during the mission basically was not up to code, or maybe it was uh, Williams telling you to do something in a certain way. Like, we'll talk offline about what this means. Okay. Um, but that's cool. it, it's also interesting because I don't think Alel did anything particularly wrong, but that's how the new reputation rules work. Um, okay. We might keep the reputation. We might not. You know, again, we're just trying to see what works here. I spend momentum to cancel that. <laughs> um, no, let's make let's make it interesting. Yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can figure out a good fluff reason for that. All right, cool. Uh, last thing before I cut the stream, uh, is everybody good for the eleventh? Yes, absolutely. Alrighty, then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, still watching, uh, you will see these lovely individuals next week. See you later, stream.